Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use Scribner to do basically what we just did in the Y Writer 6 section. We're going to open a new project. Uh, never mind what I'm working on here. This is, uh, I'm working on my game Entrepreneur. I'm trying to fix this so that it's not so insane. But I've been using Scribner to do all my planning organization for my scripts in this, which you can watch another video in my queue on how to do game design on Scribner, particularly with the engine I'm using. But we're going to not worry about that right now. We're going to go on to new project. So we're going to do, we'll just do a blank one for now. And one thing about Scribner, uh, because we're doing a comparison video, it is worth noting that Scribner has all these templates that Yrider does not have. So if you do want to do, let's say, a fiction template, the, it, basically what it does is it formats for you. I like it, the script writing version is pretty good. I've used a little bit of that on a test. Miscellaneous, just some of the other things you can use. But that's what's nice about Scrivener is it knows your templates that you want but if you don't want to set your own template if you want to just start fresh just go to blank so click on that and then you need to give yourself a name so this will be pop goes the waterbed again you can't type okay it's blank so we'll hit create and then it's going to hopefully give us a fresh background you see a oh there it is okay so we'll uh, maximize it so we can see it so I did a little bit of uh, reviewing on Scrivener in earlier videos so I'm not going to do all that again well, what I do want to do instead is I want to compare the features between the two programs by taking the contents in Yrider and copying it over to Scrivener so we're going to do that bit by bit what I'll probably do is I may actually pre-fill it in and then show you what I've done I think that would probably be the quickest way, but before we do that, let me at least do one thing as we're looking at it. So what we can do is we can go into, see, do we want to do chapter? Can we edit the chapter? We may want to start with this. So for the description, uh, after waking up in the carcass of the fleeing waterbed, Bob against his wife switch buys a waterbed. That's the premise of the chapter. So let's do a control copy of that real quick. And then in Scrivener... Um, we're going to call this, I'll call this chapter one. I think I'll just use the regular number this time. Okay. And then I'm going to, the, oh, let me open up the inspector. That's what we're missing. Okay. All right. So once we set up our chapter, we're going to go into the inspector, which is the little button here. And then I'll just paste what I had. Uh, and this will be my synopsis. Okay. And then our label, let's see, we're doing, let's see, what we'll do, we'll actually have, well, do we want, we'll do first draft. First draft, um, label, we'll say, we want to do scene. You know what, I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to start over. So once we put in our synopsis for the section, for chapter one, we're going to want to put our scenes together. So I think the best way to do that would be to right click on chapter and we want to add, I think, new text. So we have a subdivision. So this becomes our note card. This doesn't necessarily mean that we have to write in our chapter info here. We think we can do that for the scene. But we do like scene one, pop goes in the waterbed. And then we're going to do back here, we're going to add another new scene, which will actually move down here. This will be scene two. Um, this one was called uh, Waterbed Argument. Waterbed now Argument. Now I may change all this later. So that's going to be our first chapter. Uh, so what we'll do is in scene one, we'll actually write the text here. Now we've already written the text in the a separate video. That will be different than this actual review. But if we want to go into the content, we'll just 
quickly copy paste all of this over. Okay. And then we'll just put that into scene one. Okay. Hopefully that will work. Good. So that's, uh, make sure, yeah, the words count and match. So. so that's our first scene. And then if we go on to scene two, we haven't written it yet, but it'll all come together. All right. So anyway, we're going to push this off to the side here. Now, the reason why we're pushing this off to the side is we want to show that uh, scenes one, two, and three are all part of chapter one. So if we go into the outline view, it should show up. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want to do. So when you push them all to the side, then this will, will appear. Otherwise, if we go into draft, that's where your chapter one no card shows up. So the purpose of this for the cork board is it just gives you an overview of what things are. So you get a, you know, a quick look at everything. I'll probably do another video down the road where this whole thing is filled in. And we'll compare why writer to Scrivener again when the entire project's finished. But I just wanted to give an overview of what the differences are. The video is really for why writer again. I've done enough on Scrivener that I think you guys get the point. But you know, both the robust systems. Um, Scrivener obviously looks better. It's just it's a nicer, cleaner interface. So I would certainly recommend using Scrivener if you don't already have it. But you can still, or you can use both. Honestly, I mean, you can. I mean, what's they're both organizational tools, just as much as anything else. So, you know, if you need to have finer point data that Scrivener has got that Yrider doesn't, then, you know, why not use it? I'm going to certainly do that for this story. I'm going to keep keep it updated in both programs. But if, yeah, if we go into the description here, we'll just, I'm going to quickly copy over all the pieces so that we have a reference point. So if we, again, if we go into the outline version, okay, corkboard. Now our scene is highlighted. And the other thing you can do too is over here in the inspector, you can do like keywords. So if there's, let's say for scene one, if I want to make a note that the keywords include central conflict. As an example, by putting central conflict, I'm showing that this scene is about the central conflict. Uh, if I had a subplot, I might put that in the keyword somewhere. Uh, I may not necessarily need to do that, but you know, I can if I want. Uh, this is all compiled data. I don't really use the compiler for Scrivener or, just because I prefer to do, do, uh, do all that in Word. And um, when you do eBooks, you really just want to get the formatting down as much as you can. But the thing about Scrivener is it does export to all the ebook forms, so it's useful. But I think Yrider does the same thing. So it's worth noting. You don't really need footnotes in a novel if you're not doing that, but you, know, you can do what you want. So the status for scene one is that it's in first draft. And then uh, it's not really chapter or anything we're gonna so we're gonna actually add a label so we'll do scene okay and that's what we'll call this is it's going to be called a scene okay so now the push pin turned to blue that means it's a scene so that's one thing we can do to customize the uh, Scrivener and of course if we go into outline we can see more clearly here so once I finish the whole chapter, we'll see all of this. Now for outlining, uh, we probably just wanted to set up the names of things here and then you know work on our outline through our note cards. That's certainly an option if we wish to do that. If we do the full sheet here, we'll see all of the, the pieces together. So that's another thing you can do to be able to identify the scenes in one. And there's other features you can do here where you can you can split the window to see two different sections at once. Or if you want to, let's say, omit an entire subplot and just view the entire plot like straight on through, you can cut out anything with the subplot tag and it'll show up as just the main plot so you can read it straight through. And that's useful. So I would say Scrivener is certainly more robust than Yrider when it comes to all the different features you can do. But Scrivener is also a lot more complicated. As you can see, I you know struggled a bit to remember what exactly I could do with the program in order to show it off. As embarrassing as it is, it's true. You're going to probably run into that problem, you know, if you don't use it frequently. And right now, I've been using it to do my game programming uh, using the OHRPG CE, which uses a custom scripting language called Hamster Speak. You don't need 
Visual Studio or any of those to do uh, programming like that. You can just use the notepad. So I think Scrivener is useful for organizing uh, my way through that mess. But with novels, you know, I haven't been using it much lately because I haven't really been writing novels lately. Um, I'm, I want to get back into that flow, and I think uh, just kind of going back and forth between the two, pro two programs would definitely help with that. But um, if you use it frequently, you shouldn't forget most of this stuff. But I just the other thing I wanted to quickly do is I want to see if we have a timeline in here because I think that's where White Rider really shines. Oh, when you do the layout, this is where you would put your windows. Okay, media. Okay, so you can change your your corkboard displays. I recommend if you are using Scrivener and you want a whole training on it, I recommend Joseph Michael's programs. Uh, he's like the Scrivener guy. Just look him up. Look up Joseph Michael Scrivener and you'll find him. And he'll show you everything there is to know about Scrivener. Like you cannot leave anything out. And there's also a good one on um, Udemy.com that I have that's worth looking at. Just, there's like only one for uh, through Windows. Um, if you have a Mac, uh, definitely you can get Scrivener 3 now, and it's probably recommended. Scrivener 3 has a much different interface than this, so much of what I'm showing you probably is obsolete, as the Windows version will eventually be, but we're not there yet. Okay, so we do have an outline section here. Certainly we could probably work on that. But what I wanted to see is if we have a timeline... Uh, we definitely have some good, uh, you know, thesaurus-related stuff. The thing about Scrivener that's superior to Wide Writer for sure is in the dictionary. With Scrivener, it's already installed. With Wide Writer, you have to install it, and I actually found that to be kind of a pain because it wasn't the folder it told me to install it in one didn't exist, which means I probably had to install to that title. And unless you are good at programming, that might not be obvious. So. It's actually, ironically, it's a bit of a push. So I think Y Rider is easier to use, but Scrivener is certainly uh, more ready to go. Um, Scratchpad, if you have ideas you don't want to commit to your novel, you can just put them there. Uh, I don't see a timeline. Maybe I'm missing it. Maybe project statistics. So this gives you an overview of what you're looking at on paper. It's pretty cool. I don't think I have a timeline, which is unusual. So I think the moral of the story is both are worth having and both are worth exploring. And obviously you should use whichever one you're more comfortable with. But I wanted to do this video because I didn't know about Y Rider until yesterday. And I was pretty impressed with it. I didn't think I would be. I honestly thought Scrivener is like the granddaddy of all uh you know writing software at least for general writing you know there's certainly other specialized software for other types like final draft for script writing and so on but i'm surprised at how really useful white writer is especially now when i think of how complex scrivener is in comparison but scrivener is highly customizable once you know everything that you can do in it you're actually it's it really becomes a fight to decide which one you would rather use. But I think Scrivener is good when you kind of already know your plan. And I think y Rider is good for doing the planning. So I think for now, that's how I would maybe organize the writing process. Draft it or uh, draft the outline in y Rider. Draft the story. Actually, I would, okay. I would do the outline in y Rider. I would do the writing of the chapter in Word, because Word, I think, is still the best of the processors. And then copy all those into Scrivener and use Scrivener as sort of the overview tool to make sure everything works well as the story itself. And then, of course, you know, have a backup version of Writer for the second opinion so you can get the timeline and everything. So I would actually use all three if you've got access to all three. And I'm probably going to end up doing that. I think the productivity would certainly help but I think just kind of figuring out where you are in the process. Uh, I mean, option four is just use notepads. You know, do it the old school way and you know, get a bunch of note cards and litter your floor with them and move them around and look like an insane person with uh, yarn and bulletin boards and things and draw lines. You could do that too. That's how uh, the author of The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle did it. And then I thought that was an awesome book and you should totally read it right now. In fact, just stop the video. 
you don't need to worry about Scrivener or Y Rider or anything right now. Go pick up Stuart Turton's Seven Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. That's all you need to know. But if you don't want to read right now, go get Y Rider. Go get uh, Scrivener and uh, put an outline together and have fun with it. If you um, haven't seen it already, I just finished recording a sub video with the first scene actually being written in real time, the one you're looking at now. So if you want to see how I came up with some of the ideas that are happening here, I do explain my decisions as I go. I explain how it ref how it's fits into the total story narrative and why I'm making the decisions that I make. And you can also see how it, uh, it deviates from the outline a bit. So. It's, I think, a good companion video if you are interested in writing and you want to uh, learn how to improve on it. And the other thing that I would recommend is get lots of books on it. One of these days I may do a video on just all the books I like on writing. In fact, I probably should do that at some point, so maybe I'll do a grand link. Check the description. It may be that I update each of these uh, videos to have links to other respective videos. We'll see how that goes. It's all very random. And... One of my mottos is don't do what I do, so come in prepared. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you'll, uh, you'll keep up with the story if I continue to write it. Thanks. Bye.